Yo, what's going on people? Welcome back to Jake's Journey, mate. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a van tour on my 2014 Ford Transit Connect that I turned into a camper van for less than a thousand pounds. Right, so starting in the front. Um, when I bought it, this had 118,000 miles on it. We're now showing on the dash 128,000. So I've done 10,000 miles in it since I bought it. Let's get that down, nice and comfy for that motorway cruising. Right, so the only real change, uh, changes that I've done in the front of the van are probably the, uh, up top here. If you can just pan down and check this, what we can see is just a board that is an extension of the existing parcel shelf above your head. Um, this isn't 100% finished. I'd say this is probably one of two things that isn't fully finished on the van. This here, at some point, I'm going to carpet. But in addition, I've just added to it this little cargo net here, which I just keep like my gloves, my sunglasses, and like woolly hats in for those wintertime van life experiences. Which, if anyone is on the van life tour, will know that it is a cold life. But also, you can see here, I've got a bungee that sits above, um, and that's for just I can hang my towel over and dry stuff in the cab away from the nice warm um, living environment in the back. Where's the door handle? <laughs> right, so as I showed you before in the front, um, you can see that I had that blackboard. So that above your head where I said I'd extended the parcel shelf, you've then got this above. So if you look in there, what you can see here is a rail for curtains that pull across for privacy. When you're in the back, it just gives it a stealth vibe because when they're pulled across, it imitates a bulkhead. Um, this just means that you don't get any light from the rear of the van um, infiltrating into the front where people can then tell, like, oh, there's some dude in the back camping. Um, that's good for me, because if I'm staying on a car, um, car park, something like that, um, then it keeps uh, the general population from being like, oh, there's some dude in there. But yeah, as you can see here, I've uh, got a few Harley, uh, Harley tins, because I love motorbikes and stuff like that. Um, you've got your fairy lights along the top. But in here, you can see that we've got... Oh, uh, overhead storage and this is primarily where I keep my clothing um, so just got like lightweights and stuff like that um, and then further over to the back I've got like more gloves warm hats winter clothing thermals um, for those co cold nights and then on the left hand side I keep like boxers socks um, and I usually keep my wash kit up there as well so when I go to sleep on a night what I usually do is bring these um, bring these seats forward just about six inches. And then it just gives me a bit more room to breathe uh, with the bed area. On doing that, it just means I can bring the curtain across a bit easier and that just slides across like so and sits in nicely. And it's in two cu curtain sections. So it means that I can still have privacy if I just split the middle, but then still have light coming in from the front. Cause the only light in that having this van uh, externally, so like coming in from your sun and all that good stuff, is your front windows uh, and your side windows. I don't have any um, windows in the rear of the van apart from a mirror that I'll show you later, which helps reflect light um, into the rest of the van. Let's put those back across. So let's talk about heating uh, and electric in the van. So when I built the van, I wanted to make it, um, so the diesel heater, so I've got nice warm outlets in the winter uh, for those cold nights. Um, we're just sort of all out the way and that includes the leisure battery that I run uh, 12 volt conversion off there So what I did was I fitted them underneath the floor simply to get to it if you need to do any maintenance or stuff like that You take away this seal which isn't doing anything wrong to the van. It'll be fine. Um, and then you just lift this up here So upon taking that out if you're looking here, it's all a bit messy at the minute but I've got my leisure battery on the right hand side here, which is hooked up to the alternator under the bonnet. So when I'm driving about, this van uh, and battery charges itself um, through the mileage that I'm doing. And then if you look up on the left hand side here, you've got my diesel heater, um, which kicks out nice um, warm bits of heat in the winter. Uh, you can see, if you check out here, the outlet for it is down there, which just sits behind the driver's seat. Um, and you can change uh, the positioning of this here to um, which direction it goes and it just basically fills the van up. It's only a small van anyway. Um, it's the L2 version of the Ford Transit Connect, uh, which means that the bed in the back is about seven foot long um, without the bulkhead in. And that means that me being six foot two can have a full stretch out while in bed. Um, and the insulation levels used, uh, which you can see in other videos of mine, keep it nice and toasty all year round and vice versa, keep it cool in the summer. 
Right, cool. So now I'm going to go into how I've set the bed up. Um, so you can either sleep on the bed how it is right now, which is in its bench form um, with two uh, backrests that you can take out for an extra four inches of space on a single bed. Um, or you can take it into its double uh, conversion, which is roughly the same size as a small double, i.e. a twin bed. Um, the first stage of actually bringing the bed out is to just grab this under segment here and slide it out into place and that fits in there and just sits level with the rest of it. This on top here is 12mm ply, so it's nice and thick, which meant I could drill holes in it and have breathability, but still have the strength in order to support yourself and anyone else that's staying in the van with you. If I take that down then, you can see that that storage area there is uh, left to sleeping bags, blankets, and all the warm um, sleeping gear that you might need. It's actually sectioned off from there to the back, and actually behind that, which you can fill up um, from the driver's side, which I'll show you in a minute, is the diesel, um, the diesel can that you uh, fill up for the diesel heater and you can actually get your, your pump in <laughs> when you're at the petrol station. Right, so that's that and that sits like so when making the bed up. If you follow me now around to the rear, you'll see the kitchen area on your right hand side here. With this, this makes um, the lower part of your bed so these double as drawers for the kitchen but also flap down in order to double up as your uh, as your bed there so all we do then to make the bed together is bring over these rear cushions into place um, and then that puts them uh, with like i say a twin bed i won't go through that now otherwise this video will be long as hell but if anyone wants to see that I'll put a photo of it now. Um, I'll show you how to do that. If anyone wants any more in-depth stuff, just leave a thing in the comment um, and I can always, always do it on a story, something like that. So now that I've showed you these, let's show you how the kitchen's laid out. I'll flap these back up for now and show you one part at a time. Put this back in place. Simple as that. Happy days. Making my, my floor a bit muddy here. <laughs> right, so this end one here, get into it like so. The clasps on these, they're quite hard to get undone, but I'm not too fussed about that because they only get done when I'm driving. Quite hard to undo, but that's great because you don't want things falling all over the gaff if you're, uh, if you're driving about. I don't tend to do them up when I'm sat stationary anyway because they sort of stay in place. That comes down and in this compartment here, I've got my cooking device, which is just a double burner hob. Stuff like this, I'll leave a link in the bio to on my Amazon account. This just hooked up to your standard camping gases, like so. And then you can cook and do all your daily chores on that there. Also in here, I've got stuff like a flask. This is just for putting uh, hot water in on a night and it means the next morning, you've then got boiling water so you can have a wash and stuff like that and keep yourself nice and clean. Extra gas in there and just some sort of general expendables like spare screws, nails and stuff like that in case there's any dramas or need repairs on the van. Right, so uh, on this side as well, as you can see, is I've got my little tea towel there, which is just in one of those little presses. Just slam that in with your thumb and you're laughing. Drives out by itself there. And then I've got my bin. Uh, it's just a little flip lid bin um, and you can empty that as and when. Uh, it's just nice there because it's out of the way. Moving on to your middle drawer. This is empty most of the time, but when, well, when we're not using the camera equipment like we are now, this either has led to camera equipment or just a spare bit of clothing like winter coats and stuff like that. There's plenty of room in there um, and it's just easy access. Uh, to stuff that you might need quickly. Then moving on to the final ones where I keep my frying pans, cooking utensils, um, all that sort of stuff. It's a little bit of a mess at the minute actually. Should have cleaned it up really before giving this tour. Uh, and I've also got some stuff outside there that we've been using. So your bowls, your plates, all that good stuff. Then moving on into the lower drawers, we've got one and two. There's no dividers between these two, so it's all just one. Yes, it's a mess, but you know, you've got your herbs and spices, uh, your dried goods, stuff like uh, plasters and tablets, plasti gloves in case, I don't know why you need plastic gloves, but you know, it might do. Um, wipes, spare gas, um, bin bags, all that sort of good stuff. And a lot of, um, a lot of food gets left down there as well. That moves me on to how I actually keep cold food in the van at this time of year so I don't bother um, at the moment with having a cooler box or anything like that because I've got a roof box fitted um, I tend to put any cool food up there at the minute because it's cold 
all the time. Um, in the summer, I'm going to be using a 12 volt um, cooler box that will just run off the leisure battery, and that'll be that. Um, I don't, it's not, I don't have a need for it um, in the winter. So let's show you some of the uh, the rest of the underbed storage. So you've got access to it here on this panel, one lift up panel there, and this is full all the way to the back. And this is just stuff for I do a lot of camping, so I've got um, my hiking poles, tents, any stuff like that. Billy cans for cooking on fires, uh, the odd ration meal for when we're going off and away, tents like I said, um, and you've also got access from the rear, which I'll show you now. So it's just a general lift up here, take that up, and then you've got your all your other stuff, ponchos, stuff like that, you can sling over the side of the van, and always necessary, I've got two of these bad boys, which are just um, chocks that you can level the van off with. And um, yeah, they're good sometimes because you can't always choose where you're going to park. Extra gas is kept under there as well because it's always handy to have. Right, so if we look into the back doors, what we've got here is, if I can get them undone. <laughs> there we go. I just keep my chopping board and like newspaper and stuff like that in there. Not too much really. Generally batteries and stuff like that for the fairy lights. If you have a look in, in here, you can see that we've got the battery unit. They're just a battery runoff for the fairy lights. And you've got your little strobe one if you want to have an absolute mental rave. Um, and then just sit in there. All good. On this side, you've got, if you just unhook here, you've just got a bit of a um, bench that you can have yourself at. We're on a bit of an uneven ground, so it's usually slightly higher than this. But this is just great if you grab your wash bowl. Got a pop out wash bowl here that usually sits behind the driver's seat. You can sit that on there, do your washing up, uh, as well as having a mirror here and uh, bits and bobs of your wash kit. That means you can, you know, wash your face here, do your pits, all that good stuff. And then whoosh, bugger it off afterwards. That can now go away. The pole just sits in there like so with a splash back thing there and a little tie-in. Right, onto the top box. I don't really keep too much in there. Um, it's just general general hiking stuff again like backpacks um, and mainly my water supply there's some more hiking boots in there um, big wild camping bag day sack for cutting about during the day and uh, just a wash kit from a motorcycle there uh, I also keep this in here which is my porter shower this is seven liters and it's great for doing your washing up when you want to rinse stuff up I'm not sponsored by these by the way um, you do your washing up, you can wash all the suds off of it, and it's a shower head, which is great. It's got a bit more powerful in, but it's empty right now, because I've just used it all. But, um, like I say, I had my flask earlier. You can put boiling water in this, um, and then cool it down with some other stuff, and um, have a shower at the rear of the van, which is great. Um, if I do do that, then I usually put a mat down, which I've got there, stand on that, and then you can shower at the rear of the van. Um, right, electric points. So, here's you've got your turn on for your diesel heater. You click that on, that lights up, you press start, it then takes about three to five minutes to warm up. Once it's warmed up, it'll then start chugging out the power, um, well, chugging out the heat where I showed you earlier. You can turn that up and down from here and then turn it off like so. It's usually better to turn it off on the device, let it cool down and then switch it off on there. Also, here we've got your 12 volt output. I've got two USB ports here, which everything I own really, cameras, phones, stuff like that, it all runs off USB, so I can charge it just fine from this point. Uh, and if necessary, you've got a 12 volt adapter there that you can slam on. Usually puts out between 12.3 to 12.6 volts, um, and that never really drops. I've been away for multiple times, six, uh, up to six days, um, without driving in one place and that battery's always been enough for me um, as you can see above here we've got some more storage I just keep like my speaker just some uh, cereal bars spices stuff like that some candles um, and then the lighting in the van you've got one here which is just flick on flick off and the same detail there just behind my cameraman GP there I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but we've got some splashback stuff here. Just if you can start cooking, you don't want anything to start getting soaked up into the van and going mouldy. So that's how we've got that. Right, guys, so pricing and stuff like that. I bought the van originally for £4,150. It came with racking in the rear that I'll put on screen now. So you can see where it's come from. 
Um, it's a big step in it, really. Um, but I bought the van £4,150. I took the racking out of the rear and sold that for £300. It now means that the van owes me £3,850. With stuff that I spent on it, I spent £937 to convert the van. So, the main costs, really, were stuff like the leisure battery. That cost me about £70. The diesel heater, I think it was £92. Stuff like this, which cost me like £16. Just little, like, expendable stuff like that um, that all sort of adds up. Right, so some other big costs were stuff like the insulation, which if you go onto my page, you can see uh, the videos of where I've done insulation, uh, insulating the van, carpeting the van, stuff like that. I, the only thing that I had help with on the build um, was just the wiring for the um, connection from the alternator. Uh, so, well, sorry, off the main battery, which is connected to the alternator, into the leisure battery uh, to run the diesel here and stuff like that. Just a friend helped me tap it all together um, and then I just fitted these in place um, and he just connected them all. Uh, in a centre box down there. Um, I'm probably not the best man to speak to for that because I'm not all that fammed up on it. Everything else, woodwork, uh, carpeting, all that sort of stuff was done by yours truly. But the main reason I managed to keep the price down for this van was stuff like this. The lining on the roof, um, stuff like that, the wood I got free. My uncle was just like, dude, I've ripped this out of my shed, stuff like that, um, do you want it? I was like, yeah, sure. So little free stuff here and there, if you can pick it up, makes the van a lot cheaper. Um, that's the same with all the wood down here and stuff like that. Um, all these boards were stuff that were taken out of old vans that my dad um, like knew of and then I could fit, cut those down and fit them in place. It was about £150 that I spent on like expendables for stuff like the bin, cooking equipment. Uh, the foam was about £80. Um, I think these fairy lights were like seven quid. The, fur, the insulation in the roof and the side bits, the foam stuff, uh, cost me about 60 odd quid and I think the roll uh, itself which is the first stage of insulation cost me about 35 but rather than getting into all that too carnage and getting lost and run away with stuff and making the video 45 minutes long I'll put links down below um, to where I got the stuff um, like I said I built this uh, van in lockdown um, so there wasn't really much uh, open to me at the time so a lot of the stuff was ordered through Amazon but I'll link it in, in bio and you can uh, you can grab all of that I think it was about 15 quid for this flooring and it's just a nice vinyl a self adhesive stuff that you just slice and cut down and put in place right guys that pretty much summarizes thanks for tuning in um as i said you can get links to all this stuff that i've mentioned today downstairs hit it up um and if you want to see a step-by-step -step guide of how i built this van go on my youtube check it out it's all there and you can do the same as me um sound right don't forget to like comment and subscribe you can also hit me up on instagram uh, and get a more daily dose of Jake's journey, mate. Thanks for watching. See you next time.